Just when our hearts couldn't feel any heavier, we learn that John Thompson has died at the age of 78. The man with the trademark towel over the shoulder, the trademark intensity and drive to mold not just basketball powerhouses, but to shape the futures of young men. He did it for nearly 30 years at Georgetown. His Hoyas cut down the nets in 1984. His influence will be felt for generations. Hall of Famer in every sense. From Studio J in Atlanta, we welcome you to TNT NBA Tip-Off, presented by Auto Trader. Ernie Johnson with Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, Shaquille O'Neal. And as we talk about John Thompson, I feel like as, as nice as you guys look, we're all a little underdressed. So, oh, perfect. Here's one for you too, Shaq. Is it right side or left side? Right That's side. one of those down to the Chuckster. Thank you. Wow. <clears throat> a ton of bricks this morning. You know, when I got to test this morning, the first thing I thought about was Patrick Ewing. Uh, three guys, Patrick Ewing, Akimbe Matambo, and Alonzo Mourning. Three great men. Not just great basketball player, but great men. And there's only two basketball coaches, no disrespect to the other coaches, there's only two coaches that when you talk to their former players, they says, he doesn't talk to us about basketball, he talked to us about being great men. John Thompson was first, and Dean Smith was second. Uh, get, and, and the first time I met both of those guys, I, Michael took me to play golf with Coach Smith, and I was so nervous. Uh, but Michael always said, he never talked to us about basketball. Kenneth has said the same thing many times. But getting to know Patrick and those guys, John Thompson wanted to create great black men, and I'll always respect and admire him for that. You know, I, I talked <clears throat> uh, this morning with Michael Jackson, his old point guard. Yes. Michael was among those family and friends who were with John when he passed last night. Um, and the way Michael put it, he said, he just wanted to expand our world. He said, number one, that's the reason I went to Georgetown, to play for John Thompson. And he insisted, you better go to class, you better be up on current events, not just in this country, but around the world. And he said, they even went to etiquette classes because John was preparing them for later life and said, look, when you, go to a, when you go to a dinner somewhere, I want you to know which fork to use and which glass is yours and that kind of thing. It was that, it was that outside the basketball world kind of mentality that made him so special to, to anybody who played for him. When I was 13, 14 years old, it's a couple of defining moments that made me say I want to play basketball. The first moment was when Dale Brown came to Wild Flick in the Army base. I asked him to send me something on, you know, to getting stronger. He sent that. <clears throat> Second moment was when Ford McMurtry and, and Chris Woodard said, hey, this is who you got to play like. I want you to watch this coach. I want you to watch this player, John Thompson and Patrick Ewan. So it kind of, that's why I always wore number 33 in case you guys didn't know. <clears throat> And, you know, just, you know, watching them, too, and watching how he interacted with the players. Uh, and then, you know, went, went to Texas and, you know, had already made my decision about going to LSU. But if I didn't play for Dale Brown, I think I can honestly say I would have loved to play for, for John Thompson. And then when I met him, he was just so nice. And to hear John Thompson say, big man, I like the way you play, you're a great <laughs> player, it just, you know, made me, you know, feel pretty good. And yeah. he, he was always nice to me. And... He reminded me of you, Ernie, in this sense. He was the only guy that, that when commentating the games, he stuck up for the big guy. He wasn't bashing like certain other big guys bash. He would always say, hey, he's getting fouled, he's doing this, he's doing that. And then when I met him, I think the last time I saw him was at the Hall of Fame with, with, with Allen Iverson. But, you know, my condolences goes out to his family. I was, you know, uh, had a pretty good relationship with his son. You know, we used to do a lot of work together. But he was, yeah. he was a great man. Yeah, I, I think everybody's hitting it the right way. Uh, again, you know, you, you talk about Michael Jackson, not the singer who played at Georgetown, the point guard. Uh, he and I were best friends and still are one of the top five people that we, uh, we, we consider best friends. And he introduced me to Coach Thompson at 20, like 22 years old because we were both on Sacramento team. And then we talked and uh, exchanged numbers and he treated me like I played at Georgetown. And I asked him that one day. I said, Coach, why do you treat me like I'm one of the guys? I call, you always text to me, call. He's like, because, Kenny, you know what? Coach Smith and I are like some of the best friends we have, and you and Michael are best friends now. And so because of the relationship that he and Coach Smith had, I became a relationship. And even when Coach Smith passed, 
he called me and said, okay, now you're truly one of mine. Mm. And so uh, those, Charles talked about those breakfasts and, and at Final Four. We always would eat together, always when he was here at Turner. But what he has done for a culture of young men in our age group, he was the first coach that we've seen, uh, seen stand in this. We're talking about social change and all that. Yeah. He's the first coach to say, do that. I, and we, I said it the other day, and, and unfortunately he passed. I said, Coach Thompson, when he asked us, how does it feel to be the first black coach to win the uh, NCAA tournament? He said, no, I'm the first coach from New England to win it, not black coach. Yeah. He said, regardless of my race, creed, or color, that is what is the most important. I'm the first coach from that area. And he used to, he would take offense at that when people would say, hey, you're the first African-American coach Without to lead question. a team. And he said, because a lot of men were deprived of the opportunity who could have won it far long before I did. Yeah, you know, the, the, the two guys who I think deserve immense credit, number one is Coach Thompson, and the second guy is Nolan Richardson. Those two guys, what they have dealt with, because Ernie, with all the crap that we have going on today, nobody say the white Ernie Johnson when you win something. You know, to, to, to already have that strike against you when you're like, oh, he's black, uh, uh, he's Jewish, he's Hispanic. Like, white America, I don't think any ethnic group want anything but fairness and equality. But if you always start a, a conversation and you always feel like, oh, he's black or something like that, it makes you feel like, yo, man, I just want to be, I want to be the coach that won in national chip, not the black coach. And Ernie, it was a young fella in the Virginia area who was a hell of a football player, was a hell of a basketball player, got into an altercation, think he went to jail. Nobody uh, wanted to give him a chance. John Thompson gave him a chance, and for all those people who don't know, his name is Allen Iverson. He's a Hall of Fame player. And I saw Allen's post today, thank you for saving my life. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's so deep rich because what, I, what I've witnessed is that he would te treat Patrick Ewan the same way he treated Perry McDonald, the way he, David Wingate, Michael Jackson. It didn't matter. And th that was the quality that I, I, I admired the most is the fact that he could treat every single player with the same kind of reverence if they had come to him. And then, and just, just honestly, the, the whole rap community, when that whole, when the rap music was going on, everybody in whoever had made a rap record had a Georgetown Hoya jacket on. I'm the, that's the only school that I ever wore apparel of other than North Carolina. Was Remember Georgetown the shoes? University? Remember the, the, the shoes? Oh, the gray and blue, the yeah, gray and the, the blue, Nikes, yeah. the gray and blue it, Nikes. It, it, Everyone wanted a pair of Hoyas because he embodied everything that we wanted to be culturally. And he was an absolute joy to be around when he worked at Turner. The interviews that he did with AI and with KG. Um, with Isaiah Ryder, with wish, Vince Carter. I wish, I wish we could play yeah. the Isaiah Ryder. Uh, he yeah. made everybody cry. He was like, no, he, but, like he but he, he also, he, he also, he would also ask the questions and be honest with the guys. He'd look at Isaiah Ryder and says, I don't believe you. Yeah. Tell me the truth. Uh, and that kind of thing. And I talked to Vince Carter today about the sit down that they had when John looked at him and said, take the ball to the damn hole. <laughs> you know, and he said, he says, he said, but he, he, he still made you feel comfortable while asking uncomfortable questions. And he said, like, when the folks came to him and said, hey, John Thompson wants to do a sit-down interview with you, he went, Coach Thompson? Well, of course. Well, you know, it's that, John Thompson. Well, because he, every, parents, he parented everyone yeah. who came in front of him. And, and that's, he did not go away from that. And that's the most important thing that all coaches need to learn. And you see the basketball stuff. Listen, I love basketball. It's given everything to me in my life. But Coach Thompson understood as a black man, basketball is only going to get you so far. I got to prepare you for life. That's why this morning, the first thing I did, like I said, I thought about Alonzo, Dikembe, and Patrick Ewing, because those are three of the best men I've ever met. And he, they, made, he, they made each other proud. Our uh, heartfelt condolences from all of us here uh, to the Thompson family tonight. Prayers up for his sons, John III and Ronnie daughter Tiffany. There was nobody quite like Big John.